It's good to be here. Um, looking forward to sharing with you something that's very important to me, and I think it should be important to all of us, and that is sharing our faith. Time is short, and there's a world out there that's lost, and we have the answer. Each one of us have a special message that only we can share, and God's calling us to step up as a church, not just this church, but I believe globally to get a little more aggressive with sharing our faith. So tonight, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to share a message about sharing our faith, but you're going to have a part to play as well. I'd like each one of you that's here tonight and watching online to think of one person in your life today that you can share your faith with. Now, you don't have to know that person right this second. As we go through the message, I guarantee people are going to come to mind. But I want you to pick one, and when you leave tonight, I want you to just determine yourself you're going to share a piece of the gospel of Jesus Christ with that person. And it's going to be a lot easier than you think once we're done. So why share your faith? I ran across this uh, little saying, and I think it kind of sums it up, so I'm going to share it with you. As Christians, we must not be afraid to open our mouths and share the gospel. People will not know about Christ just by how we live our lives. It is important that we talk and proclaim the good news. I know sometimes we do not know how to start, or we think if that person does not listen or starts to dislike me or might start to dislike me, we need to be God's workers on earth and help bring people to the truth. If we keep our mouths shut, then more people will go to hell. Do not be shy. Sometimes God tells us to go tell that friend, coworker, classmate, etc., about Jesus, and we think, I do not know how. Do not fear. God will help you. The hardest part is getting the first word out, but once you do, it becomes a lot easier. Like a lot of things in life, especially things we're not used to doing or maybe don't do them habitually, it seems a lot harder than it is. But once you start engaging in a process, it becomes easier. Practice makes perfect in a lot of things, including sharing your faith. Our faith becomes stronger as we express it. A growing faith is a sharing faith. Billy Graham. The greatest way we can show a love to another person is by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And that is a very, very true statement. There's not a more important thing we can do in our life on earth than show the love of Christ because it has eternal consequences. Everything else on earth is temporary, but that is not. But more importantly, what does the Bible say about sharing our faith? It says a lot. And I'm just going to read through a few of the scriptures. And I want you just to listen to what God says to each one of us about sharing our faith. Mark 16, 15, 16. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Philemon 1, 6. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. 1 Peter 3, 15, 16. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you the reason to give the hope that you have. Matthew 4, 19, 20. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out and make you fishers of men. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. For, we preach, for I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And there are many, many more verses I could share. But one of the main ones is the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always till the end of the age. So my question is to you, and to, and to myself, are we actively sharing our faith as much as we could be? If I were to ask each one of you right now, you don't have to raise your hand, it's just a mental, raise your hand in your head. Did you share your faith last week? Would you, would you say yes? Or how about last month? We're in December of 2020. How about this year? Have you shared your faith this year? And this isn't to make anybody feel guilty or judgment or anything like that. It's just an honest question. Are we sharing our faith? And if we're not, why? And we're not alone. 
I came across several studies on the subject. The first study says churchgoers believe in mass in sharing their faith, but most of them never do. Another study said most churchgoers will never share the gospel. They go to church every Sunday, but they'll never share the gospel. Another study came across says we asked 1,600, 1,600 plus Christians why they don't share their faith. The five top reasons were fear, lack of opportunity, unequipped, they feel unequipped, lack of interest, and rejection. Fear, lack of opportunity, unequipped, lack of interest, and rejection. All five of those are self-imposed reasons. Those are reasons that those per- whoever answered who participated in that thing, they chose those things. The Bible says fear not 365 times. We're not called with a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. But yet, church-wide, not living stones, I'm talking about just church-wide, for whatever reason, we're not engaged in sharing our faith. And so tonight, we're going to talk about what is sharing your faith and how to share your faith. And the goal for me to you that are listening is to make it easy because it really is easy. We just need to think of it a certain way and practice a little bit. But it should be like breathing air. It just should come out of us. The Bible teaches that our cups overflow with. If we're full of the Holy Spirit, it's not meant to be contained inside our hearts. For us to hold on to, it's meant to overflow. God reaches sinners by using saved sinners. People reach people. He uses you and me to do his, to do his work. But we have to do our part. We have to be willing and we have to participate. So here's the key verse for tonight's message. I want you to, you have to memorize it, but just under, really take it to heart. Because I think it really makes sharing your faith a lot easier. At least it does for me. And it comes out of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. And this is Paul talking. And Paul says, I planted the seed, Apollo watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes it grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. They will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. I planted the seed, Apollo watered it, but God made it grow. How many people can you save? How many people can I save? Nobody. And we're not called to save anybody because we can't. Only God can save somebody. But we are called to share. We are called to be a light to a dark world, salt to the earth. We're called to do our part, to glow with the love of Christ and to live out that life and to preach and to share. And then it's up to God to do the rest. So when we talk about sharing our faith, we're not trying to save somebody. We're not necessarily trying to convert somebody. We're simply planting a seed so the next one of us coming by can water and God can make it grow. And as we know of the parable of the sower, right? Some seeds fall on the the rough, they don't grow, some get choked out in life. I mean, we just plant the seeds. How fertile someone's heart is, is up to them and God. Somebody, you might plant a seed, water it, and they accept Christ in the same, you know, in a a 15-minute conversation. Some people, you plant a seed, and they need to be watered for 25 years before they come to know the Lord. But that's between them and God. We're not, not, our job isn't to control that. Our job is just to take who God puts in front of us and be willing to share our faith. Amen? There's three primary ways that we're going to talk about tonight about sharing your faith. Number one is your testimony. Number two is God's word. And number three is prayer. Those are the three ways, three main ways I've found that we can share our faith. And they all are different, but they're all, they're all simple and they all have power. Let's start with your testimony. Your testimony is very powerful. Acts 4 says, by the power of their testimony, the early church grew. 
Each one of us has our own testimony, our own story. I have my testimony and you have yours. Mine's not better than yours, yours is not better than mine, but they're only yours and it's only mine. It's very unique. You have a powerful story inside of you of what God has done in your life, but it's not your story, it's his story. His story, what he's done through you, and it's not meant for you to keep, it's meant for you to share. You know, my testimony is my testimony. I was 13 years old. My best friend was a Christian black Puerto Rican. I went to a Pentecostal Spanish church. I was the only white guy in the church in East San Jose. I didn't speak any Spanish. They prayed over me. I felt the Holy Spirit. They had an altar call. I went up, and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and my life was, was changed. I was sealed with the Spirit of God and the blood of the Lamb when I was 13 years old. That's my story. You, you cannot believe it, but it doesn't matter what you believe, because I know it's my story. Just like your story is your story. Whatever God's done in your life, own it and share it, because someone needs to hear it. Yeah, he did it because he loves you, but he also did it because he loves somebody else that might want to hear your story. I know in this room there's cancer survivors. You have a testimony. There's people that have been through divorces that God healed. You, you have a testimony. There's people, you know, all kinds of situations. Some people grew up in the church. They, my testimony is... From the time I can remember, I was in church and I loved the Lord. That's a great testimony. I wish I had that testimony. You know, mine's more like an encyclopedia. I started at 13 and then when I was 35, I finally figured it out. But it's another story. But your testimony is your testimony. God uses people to save people. God will use you to plant a seed in somebody else or to water somebody else just with your testimony. And sharing your testimony is very easy because it's just like having a conversation. Hey, by the way, God did this for me. God blessed me with this job. God blessed me with this financially. God did this. God did that. God gave me the wife of my dreams. God healed me of sickness. Whatever it is, every one of you guys moved in your lives. Share it. It's very powerful. Very powerful. Secondly, it's God's word. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit, of joints and the marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. God's word is sharp. When you share God's word with somebody, it's not like us talking. It will pierce through whatever they got going on that we can't see. God's word is sharp and it's strong, and we need to use it to share, to share um, our faith. Now, when we talk about God's word, there's, there's different ways we can share it. One is the gospel. We can share the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, the gospel is summed up in 1 Corinthians 5, 15, 3 to 5. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for us, for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and then appeared to Cephas and the twelve. That is the gospel. God died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. We can share that. People need to hear that. That resonates. And one, one key about this verse that a lot of us forget, it's not just Christ died for our sins. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. No other religion on this planet has what we have in the validity of a supernatural power. Hundreds of years before he died, it was prophesied that he would die, be buried, and rise again according to the scriptures. That's the full gospel. People need to hear it. It's not another religion. It's not a religion that makes me feel good. It's not my religion and you can have your religion. No, it's the truth. It's the truth and it's the only truth. The gospel has power. Romans 1.16 For I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. There's power in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we need to share it and share it unashamedly and share it with confidence. So use your testimony, use the gospel, use the word of God. Another way to share the word of God is the scripture, just a verse. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a great scripture to share with people. If someone's sick, you know, by Christ's stripes you're healed. You know, um, there's, there's many, many scriptures we can use. Pick a favorite or two and share those. Just share a, a, a scripture is planting a seed or a scripture is watering a seed that's been planted. So you can share the gospel. You can share a scripture. 
What I like to use, and I, I'm, I ordered some more, I'd show one to you, but is I like to use a little book of John. Um, it's from PTL, ptl.org. Um, and they, they're free. You can get them free or you can donate. And I just ordered a couple hundred. I think we're going to put them on the book table when we get the book table back. But when they come in, I, grab, I, 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 I encourage you to grab one and share it. They're just little books of John, like this big. The first four or five pages talks about the gospel and exactly what Jesus did and why. But then it has the word of God, the book of John. And I like to share those with people and say, if you'll just read a chapter a day, it will change your life. It changed mine. I try to keep it very simple, especially to a non-believer. Very simple. A chapter a day will change your life. It changed mine. What they do with it is up to them. It's not up to me. It's not up to you. It's up to them. But I'm going to plant the seeds. I'm going to pass those out as many as I can. Or maybe you have a little tract, you know, or a Bible. If you have a Bible to give out, you know, um, that's great too. But you can give God's word to people. So you can share the gospel. You can go to scripture. You can give them the written word of God. But use God's word to share your faith. It's powerful and it will change lives. We just have to do it. And the third way is probably, I, probably the easiest, to be honest with you, and that's through prayer. Share your testimony, share the word of God through prayer. First Thessalonians 5.15 says, pray without ceasing or pray always. Look for opportunities to pray for people. Maybe someone that's sick or maybe they have a lost that loved one or they, they just got laid off or they're going through a hardship. People are open and we have hope for them, but we have to share it. People need to hear what Jesus has for them. Prayer is very powerful. And I would encourage you when you pray for somebody, include the gospel when you pray for somebody. As an example, let's say a friend of yours, maybe their mother-in-law just had cancer and they're very upset. And so you might pray with them. Well, can I pray with you? Sure. And you, most people say yes. Very, very rare will someone say no, especially if they're hurting. And pray for the subject you're praying about, in this case, for healing for a cancer. But in the prayer, put in the gospel. For your word, God says, by your stripes we are healed. For your word says, you died for us, Lord, and we will rise again as you have rose. Because your word says, put it right in the prayer. You know why that works? When you pray for somebody, what are they doing? They're listening. You have their undivided attention because they're hurting and they want to hear what you have to say. So definitely pray for the subject, but also throw in, throw, throw in the gospel. Pray, you're sharing your faith through the prayer, right in the prayer. They don't know it, but they're receiving it. It's very simple to do. It's just a matter of thinking about it and doing it. Pray the gospel into people. They're all ears, so to speak. So now I want to talk a little about how to share your faith, okay? We talked about why to share our faith, because God tells us to. We talked about what sharing our faith is, the three main ways we can do it, through our testimony, through God's word, and through prayer. There's not a right or wrong way to share your faith. It's, your, it, it, it's, it's for you to do whatever feels comfortable to you, and God will give you the words to say. Scripture says that. God will give you the words to say when you're doing his will. And it's not a contest but it's a calling for each one of us that proclaim Christ as our Lord. It is a calling that we are commanded to do by Jesus regularly as part of our life. I like to incorporate, I like things simple because I'm not really smart, so I make it as simple as I can. So when I share my faith, I kind of make it into a game. And so I use what I call the baseball strategy. And what the baseball strategy is, is everybody knows baseball, right? There's four hits you can get in baseball if you, hit, if, you get on, if you hit it. You get a single, a double, a triple, and a home run. What we're going to talk about now is hitting a bunch of singles. Make it easy. Most hitters that come up and hit singles, they're just swinging the bat nice and easy. Some of them might hit that double and might hit it out of the park, but they're just hitting singles. You know, Babe Ruth, one of the best home run heroes of all time, also struck out the most, right? So as Christians, when we're sharing our faith, we don't have to swing for the fence. We just got to hit singles. What does that mean? Whenever I pass out a tract, a book of John, that's a, that's a single. Or whenever I pray for somebody or with somebody, that's a single. Whenever I um, share my testimony with somebody or encourage them through my testimony and, and maybe that's something in their life, that's a single. And so I just try to do a lot of singles. 
And as you think about who you're going to share your faith with, think about what might make sense for that person. What might be the easiest way to plant that seed so that one of other of us can buy and water it later, right? So I'm going to give you some examples of what I've experienced in the last several months sharing my faith. And I do this mainly to get you to think about people that you can share your faith with, of how easy it is and how abundant it is. They're everywhere. God will put them in your life every day if you allow him. The world is full. Kona is full of people that need to hear about the love of Christ. Full. They just need somebody to tell them. They just need somebody to tell them. So here's, uh, here's some examples. First category I'm going to have is strangers. How to share your faith with a stranger. I've had a lot of um, success with actually doubles, to be honest with you. And doubles when you pray for somebody and you give them a Bible. Or for your testimony and you do that. And then it triples when you do all three and home runs when you lead somebody to Christ. So that's kind of how the game works. So I'm just trying to hit singles, but you'd be surprised. Once you start hitting singles, they're going to turn into doubles and triples pretty easy because they're going to want to hear more and you're going to end up sharing your faith and then you're going to get them given the word of God. And then as you'll see, you're going to say you want to accept Christ. And some people are going to say yes. And it's just the way it works. But it starts with a single, easy. One of the categories that I've had success with, and it's really easy, and I encourage you to do it if you're a guy. If you're a girl, I don't encourage you to do this. It's hitchhikers, right? Hitchhikers, why? Because they're so grateful that you gave them a ride. They will listen to anything you have to say most of the time. And it's just simple, but, you know, especially if they've been out there for a while or maybe it's raining, they just want a ride. They're very happy you get in the ride. I've pitched up many, dozens of hitchhikers throughout the months, and a lot of times I'll go the extra mile just because the conversation is going well. For example, I was actually with my son a few months ago and we were coming back. I think we were coming back from the dump. I don't remember. And we picked up somebody over by Polani. And he goes, where are you going? I go, we're going to Lee Heights. We live in Lee Heights, La Loa. He goes, oh, I'm going to Captain Cook. I said, well, I, I can, you know, I, I'll give you, you go, but I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. I said, hop in. So he hops in and, and we're driving and we start talking and I felt convicted because the thing about La Loa up on, up on Mama Lahoa, it's not a good place to drop off a hitchhiker, right? Because there's no place for them to get a ride going farther because there's no place to pull over. So they're going to end up probably walking up the hill. So I, I said, you know, I'll just take you to kind of leave. And then we started talking and, and I think I asked him, Sorry, are you a Christian or you ever go to church or something to that effect? And he, he said, yeah, I used to. And we started talking some more and then we get to kind of leave and we're kind of in discussion. I said, well, I'll go a little farther. I'm going to take him all the way to Hona now and dropping him off an extra 30 minutes or whatever it was. But it was a good conversation. I actually was doing it for my son as well, to be honest with you, because it was a good example. And we were just going home to hang out, so we had nothing else to do. But we dropped him off. I gave him a book of John, and I prayed for him, you know, and we drove back. It was easy. I picked up hitchhikers, um, you know, homeless guys that, you know, were just, they looked pretty destitute, you know. I just give them a book of John, maybe five, ten bucks, drop them at McDonald's, get some food. Just trying to plant seeds and meet needs. That's all we're doing, planting seeds and meeting needs. Um, one guy, and this, I can tell you a lot of hitchhiker stories, but this, this guy, pick him up, like Kimi Nani, and he has a bike on the side of the road. He's like with his bike, and he's hitchhiking. I, I think his bike's maybe broken. So I pull over, and I go, hey, you need a ride? He goes, yeah, I'm going to Captain Cook. And I'm like, Captain Cook on a bike? <laughs> That's a big hill up there in Cuyahoga, kind of leo. I don't think I can make drive that. He goes, yeah, I'm late for work. I said, okay, so hop in. So I hopped in and we, we started talking. And this guy actually went to church as a kid and he felt that he knew God, but he definitely had some, had some life choices that really screwed him up. And I just tried to encourage him the most. I, I, made, I shared my testimony with him of all the times I screwed up and how God came through. And that was, that was a pretty easy single. And I, I actually think I gave him a book of John. So that was the double. But um, so that's a lot. So hitchhikers for you guys. Or if, you're, if you're a girl and you're with a group, that's fine. If you're single, don't, don't do that. Very easy way to share your faith. Homeless people. Believe it or not, homeless people are pretty open to the gospel if you'll just take the time to talk to them. I was sitting at Kona Coffee and Tea about a month ago doing some work inside, and I look out in the parking lot. There's a little table right there, and there was this homeless guy came up. looked pretty dirty. You know, he sat down, long black hair, and I feel a tug on my heart. Can you, you, know, give him, you need to give him a, a book of John. And I was like, okay. But then I kind of him and hawed and kind of blew it off and just kind of worked some more. And, but it was kind of nagging at me. And then finally he left. And I felt bad. 
I remember driving home. I was mad at myself. Like, Sorry, God, I don't know why I didn't give him a book of John. I should have given him a book of John. That's terrible. I mean, what, what the heck? Not, what's wrong with me, right? A week later, I'm at Kona Coffee and Tea, and he's back at that table. <laughs> so did I go give him a book of John? No. <laughs> I did it again, and he left, and I was really mad at myself this time. I said, dude, what are you doing, man? This is such an easy thing. I felt so bad. But about a week later, he, I think he goes there a lot at that table. I don't know why, but I go to Kona Coffee and Tea a lot as well. So I did see him, and I did go get him a book of John, and I, I talked to him a little bit. And I went back to my, my seat at Kona Coffee and Tea after I shared it with him. And I looked out the window, and he was reading it. And I kept looking out the window, like every, you know, look out, look, look up. And he was reading it, you know. And I'm assuming he could read because he was staring at it quite a bit. But, you know, I don't know. But I felt relieved that I did it, you know. And I, say, I tell you that, kind of, the, if you come across that or maybe you miss an opportunity, don't beat yourself up. God will give you a chance to do it again. Does it matter that I did it the first two times? No. What matters is that I did it eventually. What matters is that you do it eventually, right? It's not a contest. It's a commitment, right? And so we just keep swinging the bat until we get a hit. So it's just like baseball, right? And there is no striking out in this one, in this game. You just keep swinging. You get as many swings as you need. Um, so that was my homeless guy that going to coffee and tea. Um, anybody use Craigslist? Ever? So I had a basketball hoop I was giving away recently because we were putting our house on the market. It was an old big... Costco, you know, I had it for 12 years, kind of rusted out. My son went to college, so we weren't really using it anymore. So I put it on Craigslist. Giveaway is free. And I get a call from a guy uh, in Hilo. He goes, hey, uh, you should have your basketball coop? I said, yeah, I just put it on Craigslist. He goes, can I have it? I said, yeah, I can't get it till next week. And I said, well, what, you know, how long? He goes, probably about next Thursday. This is like Saturday. I go, all right. And he goes, you know, I have four, four boys, six, eight, uh, 10, and 12. And we said, dad, I said, it's yours. It's absolutely yours. No problem. You know, um, I'd love to bless you with it. But he goes, I have a work truck. so like, I can't fit the whole thing. I said, well, it's kind of rusted out. He goes, all I want is the backboard. I said, well, can you take it apart? He goes, well, no, I got to come by and get it while I'm at work. And I said, all right, well, I'll take it apart for you. You know, it was a little bit more work than I bargained for, but half an hour later with all the rust, I took the thing off, and it was, it was cool. So he came by that next Thursday, and we loaded it in his truck, and it took a little bit because it had to fit in. It was kind of a funky truck. And um, he... Uh, I just felt God tell me to give him a book of John. I just met the guy, total stranger. His name was Nick. And so I, I, I went in the house and I got the book of John. I came out and I said, you know, Nick, um, I, I, I want to give you something. And I go, I want to give you the book of John. It's about Jesus. And he just froze right there in my driveway. He kind of froze. And I, I didn't know if I, I didn't know it was wrong. You know, it wasn't like, hey, well, thank you. For, thanks. You know, I'm, you know, I, I questioned. He just kind of stopped, you know, just staring at it. And, and so I was looking at him and I said, um, do you know about Jesus? And he goes, he didn't really say anything. You know, he's just staring at it. And I said, um, yeah, you know, he, he died for our sins and he wants to really, you know, make our lives, you know, help you out. Or, I can't remember what I said, just something simple. You know, he loves you. Um, and then he just kind of looked at me and says, you know, I, I, I made him go back to church. And it like struck a nerve with him, you know. And then, so then I said, really? And we talked a little bit about, you know, he hadn't gone to church in a while, but he needs to go back and his, his family needs to be in church. And we had a little conversation for maybe 10 minutes. And then I go and I prayed with him right there in my driveway. I said a prayer. I prayed it in. Easy double. He left. Stranger. Never saw him again. But I did get a text from him that night thanking me for sharing the book with him and thanking him and for praying with him, right? And I'll probably never see him again. But it was, it was easy to do. I just, I just had to do it. And, and I'm just saying these things not to say I'm anything special. I'm just trying to give you examples of when you can share your faith. Um, another way to share your faith is people that come into your house. No one should come into your house, in my opinion, as a believer, and not either leave with praying for them or giving them some scripture, whether it's a book of John or some verses or something we need to, and when people come to our house, that's our house. It's a great opportunity to share with them. Um, or if you get a phone call, you know, if someone calls you and you're on the phone with somebody, just make it a priority to think, how can I pray for this person? How can I share the gospel with this person? Very simply, I got a call from my friend Bob a couple weeks ago. I haven't talked to him in probably six months, maybe longer. And we were talking and then he shared he had um, 
he had some, some kind of bladder thing going on. He was kind of, you know, it was getting better, but he was kind of scared. It was kind of messed up. I said, can I pray, can I pray for you? And he goes, yeah, he's not a believer. But I prayed and I prayed the gospel over him and I prayed for healing. And he thanked me for it. And then we talked a little bit and we hung up. And I saw him about a week ago and he's doing much better. But I planted a seed, got a single. Um, I've had the kids' friends come over to the house before and I just felt God told me to give him a book of John. And so I went out in the middle of the living room and said, here you go, uh, I want you to have this. If you read it, it'll change your life, it'll change mine. Now, I don't know if they're gonna read it or not. I just felt a tug on my heart to give it to them. So I thought between them and God. Um, we had people come to our house and work before and I'm sure you do too, right? So you have a repairman come over and fix your refrigerator or install something or paint your roof or whatever. Um, we had some guys come to our house and work, um, did, did some tile work for us and some painting. They were there for a few days. Well, when they were ready to leave, I gave um, one of them a book of John. I said, hey, can I, can I give this to you? And, and can I pray for you? And I prayed over him. And then we talked a little bit. And, and, you know, he wants to start going to church again. But, you know, these people are, I didn't go looking for them. They came to my house. They're going to come to your house. Um, another place you can share your faith is in the business of the workplace. You know, we all have jobs. We all have some kind of career or some kind of, you know, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're with other moms a lot of times. You know, COVID is a little different, but hopefully this will get through this in the near future. Um, a couple examples, you know, I got a, um, I had to go meet with uh, a sheriff to do a deposition for a, an old tenant of mine. It wasn't a, a big deal, but he, this guy had called me a few times and said, hey, I really need to get together with you. And I said, all right. So I met him at Kona Coffee and Tea by happen chance. His idea, not mine. And um, I was there for half an hour, giving him a desk position. He was just writing down his thing, writing down his thing. And at the end of it, I, you know, I got to know him a little bit because we talked story and stuff. And I said, you know, can I give you something? And I just felt God wanted me to give him the book of John. And I gave him the book of John. And I said, you know, I don't know if your church, he didn't really go to church. I think he did it a kid. But I said, if you read this, it will change your life, chapter a day. And he goes, yeah, thank you, I will. If you did or not, I don't know. That's not my job. It's God's job. And just a couple more, just to give you some ideas and then we'll close out. Um, when people have sickness, it's, they're, they're very, very open because they're scared a lot of times, especially if they're a non-believer because they, they don't know what to do, right? Uh, we have a building that, we're, that we take care of and I was there about a month ago and one of the tenants, I was talking to uh, one of the tenants and we're talking a story and he goes, yeah, man, I got this heart thing going on. I don't know what's going on. He pulls up his shirt and he has this, this pacemaker on with this full-on contraption and straps and I was like, Whoa, he goes, yeah, I'm only 46, you know, I don't know, if they're, I don't know what they're going to do, I don't know if I'm going to make it, and, I, and he was like, you know, he was kind of worried, and I said, you know, Joe, can I pray for you, and he's one of the few people I've ever asked that to that said no, and what he said was, he didn't say no, he said, you know, it's not really my thing, and I said, I, okay, I get that, but it's kind of my thing, and I've seen God do some amazing things, so if you don't mind, I'd like to just pray for you, he goes, okay. And so we prayed. And then that night he sent me a text saying, thank you, Ken, very much for praying for me. I, I feel better. And I saw him recently at the property and he's doing great. And again, he thanked me for praying for him. Well, he goes, you're one of the few people that showed interest. And I didn't even show that much. I just prayed for him. But people don't do that. You know, that's, that's kind of the problem. We don't do it enough. People aren't used to being prayed for. That's if they're not a believer. So when we do it, it's something special for them because they're not used to it. They don't, they don't, experience that and they need to though and the last the last one i'm gonna share with you a couple quick home runs just because you got to have the home runs in there and then we'll close out um i had the honor to marry uh, one of my daughter's best friends uh, in april and um i didn't really know her husband too well met him a couple times and so we had him over to the house before um before the debut or day or two before the wedding and just to talk about Christianity and marriage and what it is and who Christ is in your marriage and just kind of some marriage advice and stuff like that. And I wanted to really get to know, you know, his faith because I didn't really know his faith. I knew her faith. And so during the, during the discussion, he was very open and we talked about his grandma took him to church, but his parents didn't really go to church and he kind of had a belief but didn't really know what he believes too much. And so we're seeing, I said, you know what, I just shared the gospel with him full on. This is what Jesus did. This is why. I gave him the book of John. I said, if you read this, I shared my testimony a little bit. And then I prayed over him. And I didn't expect him to, but I just asked because I felt God telling me to ask. I said, would you like to receive the Lord? He says, yeah. 
didn't blink an eye. D- didn't even hesitate. Because as I was sharing with him, I could see it, it was building. Like, you know what I mean? People, they start building. Yeah, I want some of that. Because it's truth, right? And so we prayed the prayer and, and he got, you know, and, and as far as, you know, and now he's, as a young family, and, you know, I know for a fact that he accepted God in his heart because I was right there, you know, and he's on his journey, wherever that takes him. But it was an honor to do that, and it's an honor for you to do that. And it's just not that hard. We just got to ask. We just got to be willing. We just got to be willing. A couple closing tips for sharing your faith. Look for ways to sow into people's lives, which opens opportunities to share your faith. Just be open. Be confident, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Be confident when you share your faith. Be confident, know who you are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ. Know who the God it is that you actually serve. Because he is the most powerful entity in the universe. He created the universe. And we have nothing, I mean, and I mean absolutely nothing to be afraid of when we share our faith. So be confident. Don't be afraid of rejecting, rejection. People do not reject the messenger, they reject the message. People aren't rejecting you, they're rejecting him. So our job is just to share. What they do with it is between them and God. And I know I've said that before, but it's just the truth. It takes a lot of the pressure off of us. And when, you, when you're open to it, you won't have to look for opportunities. God will just put people in your path. He will just put people in your path. You won't even have to look anymore. And just be willing to share your testimony, be willing to share God's word, and be willing to pray. And then before you know it, you got some home runs going on. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for our testimonies, Father. I thank you for the power of prayer. I pray that each one of us, Lord, pick somebody in our mind and in our heart that, wants to, that needs to hear about you. You know who that person is, Father. I pray that you plant that person in each one of us, Lord. And that sometime this next week, Lord, we have the courage to step out and love them enough to plant a seed so that someone else can come in water and your kingdom will grow. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.